The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself upward unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. We will never realize at what extent, at what price, and what sacrifice the great people have done to build up this unique dispensation of the church age into the reality to its fullest extent. The innovation of the unique spiritual life which has to be thought based upon entire truth under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit will yield you progression. A progression to the reality of a point that you and I as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ have to base our life entirely upon truth, entirely upon the word of the Lord, entirely upon the base ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that you and I can make a true source as our only base, as our only reality, as our only work that has to be executed. And we are never valuing the great sacrifice which has been made in the first century people, second century, third century. Whosoever was been called by the name of Christian the emperor so-called Nero literally used those people to be burnt as torches in the garden's emperors. One of the historian Tatticus writes to us In the 70 A.D. or prior to that in 64 A.D., whosoever was been called as a Christian was been used and was been taken. And they were been burnt alive and they would be used as torches among the street corners. In fact, even more worse, in the emperor's garden. The cost of their people that they were been called as believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ costed their life to burn out like torches. On the contrary, Apostle Paul writes to us that you have to hold the forth the word of light and word of Lord and show forth as a light, as an illuminary among these perverse and crooked natured believers. Wherewith we need to burn our life. No doubt, as the Freedom Code has been established and the things pertaining to our Lord as He controls our history, He has now placed us exactly after 2,000 years in the same time when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was alive on this earth. To such kind of a great extension was His work that today every country has a freedom of right for its religion. No one has been forced, except some Arabs, who want their country to be absolutely taken for Mohammedanism. In any nick and corner of every, every part of the world, no one has been forced regarding their religion. Everyone has been given equal right and equal privilege. As such, to which God is going to serve? And how much more thankful we need to be to our Lord we are not only enjoying the spiritual freedom, but also we are enjoying the physical freedom to worship that great Lord. 
And how much more thankful we need to be that we are productive to our Lord's work. But at the end of the day, where is our progress? Where is the glorification of our Lord to the maximum? Where is the work of Lord God Almighty to show forth? Lord, we have done valiantly thy work. The only problem in today's Christendom is we haven't made a point of reality to be the pure ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our lives. We haven't made a point of reality for rebound as number one priority. We haven't even made to scratch the base and look from where we come. To scratch the base and understand that we are all a Kenikitesus, new spiritual species unto Christ. We haven't even made a point to come back and realize the reality of the truth, which tells to us constantly, to the praise of His glory and His grace, that you and I as a believer have to show forth among the midst of this crooked and perverse nation, the true reality of Bible doctrine. And why is it? What is the failure? The only reason what is the failure is our not being obedient to God's will. Not being obedient to understand the mind of Christ not being obedient to get every thought into captivity for our Lord. And that's the reason we are not capable of pulling down each and every false doctrine that rises against the true knowledge of God. The true epinosis knowledge of Bible doctrine which has to be inculcated day by day to the minds of the people when we first have been inculcated by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in rightly dividing the word of truth. That's why we are being a great failure in each and every part of our life. Where is absent, there we are present now. We don't even have the spiritual resurrection to show forth in our lives, though we have been given ample of time, though we have been given ample of grace, though we have been given ample of opportunity with equal privilege and equal opportunity in executing this protocol plan of God. And though we have been given Ultimately, the truth of reality in Bible doctrine. And the only reason why you are not able to concentrate upon the pure word of the Lord is the only reason that we are not able to understand the true power ministry of rebound in our life. Without rebound, it is highly impossible to please that great Lord. Without rebound, it is highly impossible to get back into the fellowship and partake the true ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in our lives. And without rebound, it is no way that we can show forth the seriousness of the condition wherewith we have to be there and we are not to the exact blueprint what Lord has designed for each and every believer and kept in this unique dispensation of the church, how we have to yield and show forth the reality for the Bible doctrine. Dear brethren, how many days more we are here to waste our time? How many days more we are here to engage in those stupidified thoughts, rather than looking upon the concept of dispensations through the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in the dispensing technique? rather than looking upon the isagogical, categorical, and exegetical subject, rather than concentrating upon the true word of the Lord and the sincere and the pure word of the Lord. And how many days more we are here happy to look upon those things which the Bible said no long back. Isn't it a shameful act for us to note these things? But then to, at the end of the day, we practice those stupefied thoughts only as number one priority. We are not holding forth the word of life so that when we could be up here at the judgment seat of Christ could know that we have not run in vain or labored in vain. 
When we appear at the judgment seat of Christ, we could be valiantly telling to the Lord, Lord, with your knowledge we did reign. We pulled down each and every false imagination that was there against you, that was there against your gospel, that was there against your doctrine. How can you do that? How can you work it out? When your obedience is ready, how? What is the obedience? Obedience to right pastor teaching. Obedience to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Obedience to the Bible, which tells us very clearly. You have to get back into the reality of the word of the Lord. And you have to hold forth the word of the Lord in the original language of the scriptures, for isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word, over the dispensing technique of dispensations. And how you need to get back to the reality of the word. Until and unless you get back to the reality of the ministry of rebound. A rebound is not any gimmick, a trick. It's not any emotional ecstasy. It's not any guilt consciousness or penance. A rebound is very clear, which tells to us, confess your sin, cite a case. Confess and repent, change your mind. Ultimately, the confession should change your mind for repentance. Though repent has not been written in the 1 John 1 9, we are chilling in the mechanics what it has to be, followed by the confession of your sin. And ultimately, if you are not capable of understanding this confession of your sin, you are no way in a position to understand the reality of the word of the Lord, nor you will come back to the reality why you have been called as Alicanic Ketesis. Neither you will come to the, freedom, to the enjoyment of the freedom, wherewith you have been liberalized, number one, liberty in freedom, in free, liberty into the realm of spiritual code, at the same time freedom into the reality of physical code as well, the world where we survive. We the Christians have not been persecuted as earlier. We have not been burnt as torches. But our life has to be burnt as torches to the knowledge of Bible doctrine that we are undoing. And many men will come with their own interpretation of thoughts. Though they have Bible doctrine in their minds to be correctly interpreted. The only reason why they are not able to comprehend the true interpretation of Bible doctrine is purely the rejection of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The pure rejection of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because they do not know what is the principle of rebound. They are not aware of the principle and the learning methodology of Bible doctrine. And they are not even aware what it is to serve that great and true unique law. Therefore, dear brethren, the cost wherewith the Christianity has been built in the first century AD, the sacrifices ample that have been made, so that today we in the freedom code of our country where we are establishing, we need to really appreciate the grace of our Lord in giving us this completed can of scripture into our hands. And this completed can of scripture which has been given into our hands is the ultima that you and I have to come and learn it is the ultima that you and I have to come back and realize the reality of Bible doctrine. And it is the ultima that you and I have to come to the praise of His glory and His grace when we go back to the original languages of the scriptures and rightly divide it. Therefore, any time you study the word of the Lord, make sure that you confess your sin and be controlled of the spirit of Ephesians 5.18b and learn so that not to waste your time in useless and worthless speculations, but rather look upon the pure word of Lord. Concentrate upon the truth and the reality of the word of your true life and execute this unique spiritual life of the protocol plan of God because we are here to praise him. We are here to glorify him. Dear brethren, ponder over these things as Lord God, the Holy Spirit will further lead you into the information wherewith you can know in depth why I were kept alive even after salvation. What is the true aim of my life? Not to be equally yoked with unbelievers, saith our Lord, but you have been called as a son of a living father. And how much more we need to execute that true spiritual maturity in spiritual resurrection in order to show forth the true praise of the glory of the Lord. Dear brethren, 
We shall continue in the next tip. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to link Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for you is for very simple. In the prowess of your soul, you tell to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal life. For the believers, the great work that has been laid on upon the shoulders is to rightly divide, is to, is to be rightly filled with the Spirit by using rebound, no other gimmicks, no other tricks. The prowess of your priesthood. Make sure you have been controlled with the Spirit so that the doctrine that you are going to learn should be thoroughly investigated, thoroughly searched, thoroughly thought. And this doctrine that we have been communicating for you is your life. It is not a vain thing. And you as a believer should show and manifest by growing up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine day by day. The completed can of scripture to be told, to be learnt, and yield to the maximum glorification of our Lord. And whereas for the pastor teaches the great mandate is to be controlled of the Spirit, to be filled with the Spirit, so that you and I as a believer in the Lord can come back and look and realize what it is that it is for the diamatroma witnesses who that they have been called. The great diamatroma witnesses, indwelling trinity, Bible in our hand, and above all the great diamatroma witnesses, the hearers who have been there. If there are no hearers, dear brother, do not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our hearers. But what is our duty? Our duty is to communicate, communicate, and to communicate. So which way you want to go, you decide as we continue in the next step. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and know the cost of discipleship and know that we are here to the praise of your glory and your grace. So that, dear brethren, so, so that, dear brethren, what we are going through in this church age could come to know the realization of the importance of Bible doctrine, O Lord, and they could be a maximum glorified believers when they could reach the spiritual maturity and pass on all the stages. To this section, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us and make it a source of blessing and challenge our in Lord, for we ask in Christ's name, Father. Amen.